I'm gonna admit something to you that's a little embarrassing. I don't talk about it much. Here it is. I can be a little bit on the oily side. Thanks, but this really isn't the time. Of course, being shiny on TV is a huge no-no. Now, one innovation has taken the blotting of my oily nose and multiplied it by about a million or so. Scientists are using that oily notion to clean up oily oceans. Here's Adam Yamaguchi to explain. Okay, you can come back now. One of the first things you learn in science class as a kid is oil and water don't mix. So you can imagine when there is an oil spill in a large body of water, like an ocean, it can quickly become a huge ecological disaster because cleaning up the oil is so problematic. The way we deal with oil spills in bodies of water today is usually you just burn the oil off the surface and most of the time you just leave it. Fortunately, a group of government scientists has discovered a way to mitigate the lasting effects of oil spills by altering the molecular structure of a common household item. The oleo sponge is a sponge like you'd have on your kitchen sink, but it's different because we've played with the chemistry on all the surfaces that make up the sponge so that it loves oil and hates water. I traveled to Chicago, Illinois to visit the Argonne National Laboratory and meet Seth Darling and the team of engineers who created the super sorbent oleo sponge. This is polyurethane foam, just like you find in seat cushions and everything else. Mm -hmm. Nothing special about it. So this is oil. Huh. There's a oil spill, and you'll see polyurethane foam, and you don't do anything to it. It doesn't work. It's not cleaning up that oil. It'll just sit there on the surface. Mm. But this is oleo sponge. So it looks the same, it feels the same, it's still like a sponge, but we changed the chemistry on the surface of this foam. And this guy, when you put it on the oil, oh wow, soaks it up. <laughs> and what's cool about it is that oil's in here. You can recover it <laughs> just by squeezing it, and you can reuse it. That is amazing. And you can do that over and over and over again. Figuring out the exact chemistry to make a sponge love oil and hate water wasn't easy. The first time we tried to change the surface chemistry on the foam, it literally blew up. It was gone, vaporized. Seth's team eventually stabilized the formula, but then came the challenge of scaling up the sponge. They handmade a two-foot square pad and tested it in a large tub of water and oil, a test they recreated for our cameras. Wow, and it's just gone. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And you'll notice what's dripping off there is water. You see no oil dripping off of this pad. And like the smaller sponge, we were able to wring all the oil out of this pad, oh, wow. which can be recycled and used again. But Seth's team didn't stop there. They built a 12-foot wall of oleo sponges and dropped it into a 2 million gallon tank of salt water to test its effectiveness in absorbing oil in deep ocean currents. We submerged this wall of oleo sponge under the surface and had clouds of crude oil droplets injected into the water under the surface and had it encounter this wall of oleo sponge. And this thing was able to pull out crude oil. It could even pull out diesel fuel droplets from under the surface of the water. The next step is to test the sponges during an actual spill. But the big question is, will the name oleo sponge stick? Lots of people have tried to come up with stuff to soak up oil, so all the good names are taken. We're open for, for new names if you have any good ideas. 